Okay, about a week ago, I did a video on this channel called Ranking AFL Trade Rumors, where I ranked the likelihood of potential trades happening this offseason by their likelihood. From memory, Christian Petrarca was one of the first names I ruled out, or almost ruled out, as being very unlikely to move clubs at the end of the season. And typically, since then, the story has developed really quickly. And at this point, this current point in time, it's probably reached fever pitch. And there is still so much to play out between what is now uh, August 28th to the start of the trade period on October 7th. So in this video, I want to cover off a little bit about what's happening with Christian Petrarca and more broadly, the Melbourne Football Club in general. The underlying issues that seem to be happening here, again, just passing on what's been reported um, and the flow and effect it could have in Melbourne. And I think more or less, this has now reached a point where, dare I say it, I think Melbourne might be at a bit of a crossroads with the way they want to take their list forward. If you're living under a rock, uh, you may have missed that Christian Petrarca seems to be making a lot of noise about exiting the Melbourne Football Club. This probably uh, surfaced about a week ago where it suggested that he was a bit disgruntled and the story has really exploded over the last few days. I'm gonna release this, I think Thursday morning in Australia and I'm kind of hoping the story doesn't develop again by the time this comes out. So let's talk about Christian Petrarca first, but also we're gonna pay a little bit of reference to Alex Nilbullen and you know, right before sitting down, there's a little bit of noise that Cozzy Pickett is considering a move um, due to homesickness factors, family reasons. I think he's expecting the birth of his first child. Whether homesick to him is WA or South Australia remains a little bit unclear. But let's let's talk about Petrarca first. This story is huge and easily it's, it could be the biggest trade deal or story that has hit the AFL for many years now. So a little bit of context, um, you know, Petrarca had a pretty good season this year. He was in fact uh, rated by champion data as the fourth best player in the competition prior to his horrific spleen injury. Now that details of that have surfaced as well. So, um, you know, we learned a little bit about how close, you know, he was to potentially dying. At least that was the the way he phrased it. And as a result, there's been a lot of um, psychological trauma from that experience, which is, you know, pretty awful. Um, but there's a side story, you know, in the last 24 hours, it's also come to light, you know, the, how serious he is about potentially leaving the Melbourne Football Club. So we'll cover off that first of all. I've got extracts from different articles here. I'm gonna start with something that Sam McClure said on Footy Classified. Now we know that Sam McClure doesn't have a very good track record and there is an inverse correlation between how confident Sam McClure is about something and how likely it is to happen. Nonetheless, I'm gonna pass this on. So this is Sam McClure summarizing the reasons why Christian Petrarca wants to leave Melbourne. And he could be right, but you know, broken clock. So Sam McClure says, some of the reasons for why Petrarca want to leave are the club's unprofessional approach to the Clayton Oliver situation last year, which saw the fellow Demon Star dangled on the trade table. Um, okay, I have no insight onto that. We know that there was a suggestion that opposition clubs, rival clubs, sensed that Clayton Oliver was gettable last year, the trade period. It all blew up in the media and eventually um, he had decided to stay at Melbourne or Melbourne decided to retain him, whatever happened there. Secondly, Melbourne's handling of Petrarca's life-threatening season-ending internal injuries. So for whatever reason, I, I presume a lack of support here, um, whether or not it had something to do with him going back on the field. From my understanding, I thought Petrarca decided to go on the field. Either way, he's unhappy with the way Melbourne have handled the situation broadly. He's also unhappy with, reportedly, the Demons' decline since the 2021 Premiership, having not won a final since, including going out in straight sets the last two years and missing the top eight altogether this season. So. It's hard to argue with that. I mean, there is a part of me that thinks, is that a little bit entitled? I mean, Melbourne got themselves into the position to get a double chance twice, and Petrarca, off the top of my head, would have been part of the team that went out in straight sets losing four finals in a row. So are we at that point where people are getting frustrated because they're not winning finals, they want to switch clubs? That doesn't hold a lot of water for me. Things have capitulated this year at Melbourne. So maybe on the more recent side of things, I do understand why he's looking at Melbourne's future and thinking, well, the premiership window is probably over. Next, his desire to play in front of big crowds. I think that was something that was uh, heralded this year, Melbourne's crowds not really being significant. And finally, the ability to enhance his brand, in brackets, cooking social media account to boost off-field earnings. Okay, so that's interesting. Like, is he really struggling to generate um, attention at the moment? Does he need to be at a big club to do that? I don't know. That's listed as like the fifth point down with maybe the, the first few that we mentioned there are a little bit more compelling. So now it's reached this point where there has been a lot of talk about how there is a division between the players and Petrarca 
Uh, There's a suggestion that the players are unhappy with his attitude. That's coming from Damien Barrett, and I think Sam Edmund also suggested this. So I watched Sam Edmund talk about this on SEN, which you can find on their YouTube channel if you want to actually watch it. And he made the comment that, you know, to players, Petrarca is saying that he's unhappy with leadership. When he speaks to leadership, apparently Petrarca is expressing dissatisfaction with the playing group. So... It could all be true. There could be miscommunication there. Either way, there's a lot of talk about um, the club and the playing group in particular being unhappy with Petrarca's attitude. Now, this is coming from John Ralph. This is a quote. He will do anything he wants in the next six weeks to get himself out of the Melbourne Football Club. That is very strong language. He's prepared to watch the world burn if it gets him to the club of his choice. Okay, so now... There's enough noise out here suggesting that Christian Petrarca really wants to leave. I knew that there was um, also some sort of Channel 7 interview that he pulled out of late. I think Melbourne had an explanation that it was a miscommunication or whatever, but I think there's enough to suggest here that Petrarca wanting to leave Melbourne is real. And that flows onto this conversation of should Melbourne, you know, hold firm on this? Is that right for their club? Who would be the potential suitor for them? And what impact does this have on Melbourne's list? And I think it will be significant. I think the reasons for Melbourne potentially dealing Petrarca to another club are starting to stack up. So first of all, Premiership window appears appears to just about be closed. I think their list has been aging for a while. I think they've done a pretty good job of hitting the draft. They took two first round draft picks last year. And we'll talk about some of the other young talents they have on the list. I don't think they're screwed by any stretch of the imagination, but where are they exactly? Because for a team that finished bottom five with Petrarca admittedly missing, you know, one player is not going to be the difference between them elevating back up to being a premiership contender again. Now we do see outlier seasons somewhat often. I mean, look at Collingwood in their last year under Nathan Buckley to their first year under Craig McRae. They went from bottom two back to a prelim, admittedly with a change of coach. So maybe putting a limit on what Melbourne can achieve with this playing group um, is probably unfair at this point in time, even if I will admit it's hard to imagine them bouncing up in the same way that Collingwood did. We also need to bear in mind the fact that there is also the clear big elephant in the room is keeping around a player that is allegedly pissed off a lot of the playing group, creating discontent, making a bit of noise about it in the process. There is a strong argument to be making that you probably shouldn't keep a player that really wants to leave at your footy club. Now, unfortunately, Christian Petrarca is one of the best Melbourne players of all time. And I'm sure there's these fans who have been watching longer than me that will, you know, protest that. But I think, you know, at his best, he has been the best player in the competition. Number four this year, still unreal. I mean, Max Gorn probably takes the cake as being a more significant servant of the footy club. But I think the point still remains that I do think Melbourne's premiership window lives and dies by Petrarca's presence on their list. If Petrarca goes, it is over. He is also 29 and wants to play at another club. We also have this other Tasmania-shaped elephant in the room. So I've made this point in a previous video where I think that people are getting it wrong a little bit, in my opinion, bearing in mind I'm an Eagles fan, but people are getting it a little bit wrong around Tasmania and suggesting that the teams rebuilding now are the ones that are vulnerable. I don't think so. Maybe Richmond, because they're a little bit further back than, say, North Melbourne, who's been doing it for a while. Gold Coast has had plenty of access to the draft. West Coast is starting to get there. Hawthorne are probably on the other side of it now. Those clubs, I think, are going to be relatively okay by the time 2026 comes around. What you need to be looking at is the clubs that are at the back end of a premiership window right now. Those are the ones going to be vulnerable for when they dip down the ladder in a few years. Now, Melbourne, in my opinion, is probably tracking to at least fall out of premiership contention over the next two to three years if it hasn't happened already. So, they could be in a great position to cash in now on a potential deal for Christian Petrarca, hit the draft for a couple of years, and then bounce back. Because I think what is already there at Melbourne, in terms of young talent, in terms of young crop, is pretty rock solid. Now, that does kind of change if Cozzy Pickett leaves, but we will get onto that. So we could talk about teams that Petrarca would potentially go to. So he wants to play for a big four Melbourne club. Or he didn't say big four, but he wants to play for a big Melbourne club. He wants to play in front of big crowds. There has been a suggestion that he is probably more likely to want to play in Victoria. Now, that does narrow his options fairly significantly, but I also don't believe it's been ruled out that he would leave Victoria. So not too sure what to make of that. You'd think that if he is a a player that wants to enhance his social media presence, you'd think going to GWS or Gold Coast might hurt that. So you'd think you know, playing in front of big crowds and getting a, a presence... South Australia, Western Australia could be options for him. Although, again, I don't think those are super realistic. So let's talk about some Victorian suitors. We'll start with Carlton. 
there's a huge story around this that sort of came up and went before I even really noticed it was happening. But there was a suggestion that Mackay could go to Melbourne and Petrarca could go to Carlton and there could be a swap around that. But I believe it's Mackay's manager, Trotter, came out and said 100% that's not happening. Harry Mackay has no reason to move sideways to Melbourne, uh, although Petrarca moving to Carlton makes sense for Petrarca's interests. So I really don't think that is feasible unless Carlton are going to stump up Harry Mackay. They could offer a first round pick this year and next. Those are not particularly juicy first rounders, but they're still probably relatively in the mix considering the lack of other options. So we'll talk about Collingwood. Collingwood do not have either the draft collateral to make this happen, nor do they have salary space. Again, I think this would cost them a significantly good player to get off their books to be able to get Christian Petrarca onto their team. So I think you can probably rule out Collingwood at this stage, and, and McRae more or less suggested that in his comments. I think it was on SEN as well. I'm not too sure. Uh, we could talk about Essendon. So they are a big four club in the sense of reputation and brand, I suppose, although it hasn't been a particularly good stretch for them in recent times. They do hold pick eight and a future first round pick. They could potentially get a deal done. So of the three teams, they have the strongest offer in terms of draft collateral. If Petrarca is unhappier with the direction of Melbourne, is it likely he goes to Essendon? Well, I suppose that's where you see his priority stacks. Does he want to play in a club that is likely to play in you know, a successful period? I think Carlton have that over Essendon. Again, I'm speculating, but I'm considering the outside noise around Essendon at the moment, and even their fans are pretty unhappy with the way things are going. So Essendon is a contender there. They fit a number of the boxes, but not all of them. You'd have to think both Richmond and Hawthorne don't make sense. Richmond's like, you know, they're, they're about to hit the draft in a major way. I suppose it's possible, but then you also consider, A, the direction of their list. That, like, it probably doesn't really make sense for them. And B, you know, Petrucca wants to move to a club that presumably is going to play in big games and play in finals, and I really don't think Richmond are in that window. Then there's Hawthorne, and Hawthorne have their hands full at the moment. Now, they could absolutely drop the ball on Tom Barris and Josh Battle and focus their attention on Petrarca, or maybe they could go Petrarca and Battle and leave Barris to stay at West Coast. They too don't have an amazing draft hand to be able to offer with their pick is currently at pick 12, and that could be pushed back if they get further into finals. Do you think they have enough on their hands? There's also Harry Perriman that they're chasing. So it's possible. It is possible. I'm sure Petrarca would love to go to Hawthorne compared to some of the other options there, but there are reasons against why that would work too. Then there's Geelong, not technically a big Melbourne club because they're not in Melbourne. However, they are a team that does play in big games, naturally, poised for some success, probably could use a bit of midfield punch. Unfortunately, they've probably got their hands full with Bailey Smith. So again, they could pull the rug from under Bailey Smith Probably not super likely. And again, not the strongest draft hand to be able to negotiate a deal for Petrarca because we are living in a world, well, if this is the final season, you can't trade more than one future first round pick. You can't trade past next year's draft. That will change next year. We could talk about the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, again, not technically, well, they're certainly not an MCG tenant, not necessarily one of those big Victorian clubs that gets huge crowds to their games. Nonetheless, they are in the window and you know are probably also looking at a bit of a re-imaging of their side, obviously like McRae and um, Caleb Daniel potentially leaving, Bailey Smith's going, like there could be room to make that work. Again, in terms of their draft picks, well, they'll probably get a late first rounder for um, Bailey Smith. They might get a future first rounder. I, I don't exactly know how that's going to play out, but let's assume that it's best case scenario. They get two first round picks from Geelong. I don't know if that would be enough to get Petrarca. So we could look at you know them potentially offloading, offloading players, young talents, like it will cost something extra. And I just don't know if any club will be willing to part ways. But imagine Petrarca and Bonds barely in the same team. Now that is interesting. Then there's St Kilda. St Kilda could be a little bit of a dark horse here. Now then again, not a club that plays home games at the MCG or necessarily draws big crowds. And obviously coming off a disappointing season where they finished one or two spots higher than Melbourne. So there's that, although I do think the end of the year was quite compelling. So there is a possibility, it's not set in stone, but there is a possibility they get band one compensation for Josh Battle. It could be band one, it could be band two, but in a hypothetical world where they get band one compensation, that leaves them with picks seven and eight in this year's draft. Is that something that could be enough to satisfy Melbourne? You then have to satisfy Petrarca to go to St Kilda. And again, looking at all his core aims, I just don't know. I just don't know which club would be likely to get him unless someone like a Carlton moves heaven and earth to get him or potentially Hawthorne, like I said, but they have to bow out of some of the deals that they're already probably knee deep in at the moment. So that's a lot on Petrarca. 
I guess to summarize that point, I think Melbourne have a huge decision here to make because I think it will completely alter the trajectory of their list. Now, it probably just means that they pull out of premiership contention officially. Well, there's no such thing, but they will be consigning themselves to the reality that a premiership is not going to be on the agenda for a good few years. Is that the right decision? Well, you have to factor in how badly Petrarca reportedly wants to leave Melbourne. I think if it if the noise is true, and Petrarca is this keen to get out and causing this many headaches, which again, it could be sensationalist reporting, but if it's not, then Melbourne probably are in the position where they probably should move him on. But then you run into this brick wall of everything I just discussed there where I don't know which clubs would be serious enough to make this happen and and compensate Melbourne properly because he is heavily contracted. It's a hard one to read here, but let's hypothesize and say they get a decent offer, a couple of first round trip picks for Christian Petrarca. Well, I think that could actually be a decent outcome for them considering they're also going to lose Alex Neil Bullen and who knows about Cozzy Pickett here again. I don't know what to make of that. It is fairly new that, to the suggestion that he's willing to look around. There is a compassionate element. If he has a young family, if he's having a birth of his first child, that may instigate a move there. And I do think Cozzy Pickett leaving Melbourne is a disaster uh, because, you know, 2019 draft, well, what does that make him? 23, a huge part of their future, still a very important player going forward. I think Melbourne, like I said, I think they've done a pretty good job of hitting the draft in recent times. And I think their young core is not bad for a team that has a lot of players probably a little bit past their primer right at the back end of it. So the list spread's not too bad. And that puts them in a decent position now to complement the young group that they've got. So we talk about Trent Rivers, 2019 draft. Cozzy Pickett, assuming he stays, is a big part of that. Jacob Van Royen looks like a good young talent. Judd McVie is great. Caleb Windsor looks like a great selection from last year's draft. You also got Jake Bowie. Daniel Turner, a 22-year-old key forward that's come on a little bit this year. Then there's a number of other players still under the age of 25. One of them is Harrison Petty, who has recommitted to stay at the football club. So there is it isn't all doom and gloom in terms of Retention, although there is a lot of noise at the moment. Spargo, Chandler, Tom Sparrow, Blake Howes as well, we've seen debut. They're not starting from scratch. So if they do take this decision to, you know, call it quits on the premiership window, move Petrarca on, get something out of it, hit this draft hard, then they're in a position where by the time Tasmania comes around, they're probably, they could potentially beat North and West Coast back up the ladder. And Richmond as well. Even though these teams are going to be hitting the draft as well, Melbourne are probably a few years ahead and they could capitalize. They've already got a top five pick in this year's draft. If that becomes two or three or, you know, potentially spread into next year's draft as well, then Melbourne could be really proactive in turning this crisis into an opportunity in a few years time. So to summarize, I think this is a crossroads moment for Melbourne, absolutely no doubt. I would like to see Petrarca stay. I would like to think the best case scenario here is the uh, reporting around his discontent is a little bit overblown, sensationalist. You know, he seemed to be absolutely bleeding red and blue not that long ago. So, you know, I think it would be great to see him stay a one uh, one club player. But if this is true and he really wants to leave and Melbourne can extract decent value for him, I'm not saying they bend over, but if Melbourne can make this work in a way that compensates them and adds to their future, then I think in a few years time, there could be benefits paid off over time. But let me know in the comments what you think, guys. This is going to be a very interesting watch. Probably the biggest trade deal since, oh, geez, I don't know. I didn't really think about it before and asking myself that question on camera. But I mean, since Buddy Franklin or Gary Ablett, I don't know, I'm probably forgetting someone obvious. But either way, huge, huge piece of business happening here. Let me know in the comments what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.